Hey everybody, so today I wanted to show you how you can replace a drive in a 2010, 2011, 2012 MacBook Pro and I think it'll even work for some of the earlier versions like 2008 and 2009. So I wanted to show you how you can replace that drive if it has a hard drive installed in it or if it has a solid state drive that you want to put a larger one in, I want to show you how to replace it so that you can have a larger drive in your computer. And of course, we're going to put a solid state drive because it's going to be so much quicker than a hard drive. So I'm going to be using an iFixit toolkit. Now I'm going to include a link for a newer version of this same one that I have because it's got a lot more tools in it than mine does. But I'm going to include a link for that down below in the description in case you want to get a kit that can do everything that this one does plus more. So if you'd like to get that, just look down in the video description and I'll have it down there for you. And I'm also going to have a 7.68 terabyte solid state drive that I'm going to be putting into this MacBook Pro. So it'll give me tons of space for anything I put on there, whether it's virtual machines, whether it's documents, whether it's videos, whatever I'm doing on the computer, that 7.68 terabyte drive is going to work perfectly. So I've included a link down below for a really good 7.68 terabyte and also an 8 terabyte solid state drive. Now, the only company that I know that makes an 8 terabyte is Samsung and it's their QVO version. But if you get a 7.68 terabyte version, you can get one from Micron and that's the one that I'm going to be using. So anyway, let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you all the steps you got to take in order to put that new drive in this computer. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is go ahead and shut down the Mac so that it doesn't have anything on and it's completely turned off. And then I'm going to unplug the power cable from that MacBook Pro. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and close it and I'm going to go ahead and flip the computer over to the bottom and then I'm going to take out all these screws. Now there's four on top, there's four on bottom, and then there's two right in the middle. Now the four that are on top, you probably want to keep those separate because they are different sizes. So when I take them out, I'm going to place them at the exact same place on the desk so I'll know where they would go back into the computer. Now in my iFixit toolkit, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use, I like to use the smallest bit that I can. And the reason that I like to use the smallest bit is because it gets down into these little bitty screws really well. So the one that I typically like to use is this PH0. Now you can go smaller, but I've had trouble getting them out if you go smaller than the pH zero. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take those screws out one at a time. And of course I'll speed this up for you all. And then once I have the screws out, we'll take the bottom off. Okay. So I actually did have to go down to a pH double zero in order for some of the screws to come out. So that might be something you have to do if yours is giving you trouble getting the pH zero to go into your screws. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom off. So you just kind of lift up on the part where the screen hinge connects to the bottom part. I'm going to lift up right there and then in just a minute it'll pop. And then I can take the rest of the bottom off. Now, if you'll notice, here's my battery. Here's the RAM in the computer. And right here is the solid state drive that I've been using. So I'm going to take this one out. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this one in. It, like I said, it's a 7.68 terabyte. So that's going to give me lots of space in order to have on this computer for anything that I need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take the screwdriver and I'm going to take these two screws out right here and they actually don't come out, you just loosen them. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen them and they'll stay on the bracket 
and then this little bracket comes out, which I'm going to set to the side, and then now I can just pull the solid state drive out and disconnect the SATA cable. And so now all you have to do, you can transfer this little cable over to the new solid state drive or hard drive, and you take out these four screws right here and put them on the new one, and then we can put it back in. So give me just a moment and I'll do that. Okay, so I wanted to stop for just a moment and let you know that these screws that are in the drive are actually a T7 socket. So you might need that T7 socket bit in order to get those screws out to put them in the new one. But I'm going to go ahead and put those four screws from this one into this one and we'll put it back in the computer. So give me just a moment. Okay, so now I got all four of the screws into the solid state drive and you don't have to put this little piece of plastic back on there. If it keeps falling off, you can tape it on there or you can just leave it off. It doesn't matter. But now you're just going to go ahead and you're going to connect the SATA cable to the new solid state drive and then you're just going to slide that solid state drive in. You're going to put the bottom part first which is closest to the bottom of the computer. You're going to slide that in and then you're going to let the other part fall. And then you'll see that you can go and you can take this bracket and you can put it right back here and it'll screw it down. But we've got to change out. We've got to go from that T7. We've got to swap over to the PH00 again. So I'm going to go ahead and screw those down now. All right, now that I have that bracket in really well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take that bottom cover and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on. And when you're putting it back on, make sure you put the screws back in the same spot and make sure that they're tightened pretty firm so that they don't come out. And then you'll be finished with replacing your drive. Okay, so I got the bottom cover on with all the screws put back in really firm so that they won't fall out. So now all you have to do is just flip it back over and then your new drive is installed. Thanks so much everybody. I hope that was helpful on how you can replace your solid state drive or your hard drive in your MacBook Pro so you can have a larger one or a faster drive if you went from a hard drive to a solid state drive. If you have any questions about this process, just let me know down below in the comments and I'll be more than happy to get back to you about that. And if there's a video that you would like for me to create for you, please let me know that down below in the comments as well and I'll do my best to create that for you. And because you all do such a great job, if you can, hit that like and subscribe button so I can keep putting up more great content like how do I replace my solid state drive or hard drive with a newer, larger, faster one? And I'll be glad to keep putting up this great content for you all. Thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate you all. I hope you have a great day. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.